All right, so a haiku is a poem that has a syllable pattern. It goes five syllables in the first uh, line, seven syllables on the second, five syllables in the last. And so we are going to create a haiku using these eight, uh, seven words. And the seven words are divided into two-syllable and three-syllable words. Those are the only words we're allowed to use. So since I know that the first line, the first line is going to have to have five uh, no one at home can see that. So we know the first line has to have five syllables. Well, that means since I have two syllable and three syllable uh, words, that I can have a two syllable word followed by a three syllable word, and that equals five syllables, right? Yes. Okay. Yes. So <laughs> we were trying to get this. So uh, how many two-syllable words are there that can go in this first spot right here? Four. 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 So we have four uh, two-syllable words. How many three-syllable words do I have? Three. 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 So um, in this case, I have a grand total of six options. Or sorry, 12 options. Four times three is 12. But wait a second. Do I have to start with the two-syllable word? No. 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 I can start with the three-syllable word. So I have to double this so that I can switch the order. Because I can go three-syllable word, two-syllable word. So this, uh, this has a grand total of 24 options for my first line. We okay so far? Okay. So then for my line that is going to have seven syllables, well, for seven <laughs> syllables, I can have, uh, well, four plus three is seven. So the only way I can do this is if I have a two syllable, two syllable, and three syllable word. And obviously I can switch this order. I can go two, syll two syllable, three syllable, two syllable, and I can go, <coughs> Three syllable, two syllable, two syllable. But I'm only going to worry about the two, two, three first, and then I just have to multiply it by three because I can have three different orders. Wow. So if I've already used one two syllable word here, how many two syllable words can I use here? Three. 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 How many more <laughs> two syllable words do I have left to use here? Two. 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 <laughs> How many three-syllable words do I have left after the first line? Two! Two! two. <clears throat> so, uh, for a two-syllable, two-syllable, three-syllable second line, uh, three times two times two is... Uh, Twelve! Twelve. Twelve. Almost said Twelve. <laughs> yes, this is a math team. And so then, <laughs> then uh, we agreed that we have three different orders of two, two, and three. So we have to multiply this by three, and we get a grand total of 36 options. Okay, so now we go to the last line. The last line. So for our last line, we have two. So we need five syllables, and again, we have the two times the three, or two plus the three, and we can switch that order as well. Uh, how many options do I have left here? Two. One. Two. Two. One. One. Two. One. Two. Well, let's think about this for a second. Okay. 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 Zero. 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 One is one. one. It's actually negative. We have four different words. We have used one, two, three of them. So we have one option left over. How many options do I have left over? For this one. three syllable, oh, one. 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 So one times one is one. Two. one. But wait a second, I can switch the order, can't I? Oh. So times two. So now, uh, now we can uh, go ahead and we can pull up our uh, handy dandy calculator. Wait, is it twenty-four times thirty-six times two? So we have twenty-four options in the first line. And I need to multiply that by the 36 possible options in the second line times the two possible options for the third line, and I get my answer. Wow. That's crazy. Wow. That's crazy.
So it's not that difficult of a problem, quite frankly. It's pretty straightforward. But you have to know how to organize it and think about it. All right. So um, talking about number 10, I, I know um, just for the, just for, just so everybody just knows, just, for, just so everybody knows, uh, Eva, did you get this problem right? Yes. Okay. So, nice so congratulations to Eva. Wow. Yeah, uh, Eva. He got, he got it right. <laughs> but, uh, and uh, I, I somehow feel. I somehow feel that he has had an opportunity to get his uh, voice on this video already, so I'm just going to move on. <laughs> okay, so um, here we go. So we know, Dean, that uh, we have a Heron her her mean, and it defines this uh, mean by saying that um, if we have a, 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 a pair of values A, B, uh, h of a comma b is going to be a plus the square root of a times b plus b and that's all divided by three that's crazy so um what i'm going to do is uh, and we know that that uh the a value is 40 so right away i can say 40 plus the square root of 40 b plus b and uh, Kinley's going to agree with us. We're like, wait a second. Is there a number that goes into uh, 40 that's a perfect square? Is there? Yeah, what? Four. 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 Thank you. Yeah, I got it. Okay, yeah. Right. yeah. So we have the square it's root awesome of song. four. <laughs> I don't know what he said, and I don't want to. So square. Uh, what is the square root of four? Two. 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 So we have 40 plus 2 times the square root of 10b plus, and we have this, this b right here. I don't. Does that make sense so far? Yes! yes. Why would okay! You Why would you simplify that, though? Well, because that gives us a clue as to what the possibilities for this b value are. Because we want only positive integers, and an integer is a whole number. So for us to have a square root that is a whole number, that means whatever inside the square root has to be a multiple. perfect square. And it has to be a multiple of 10, because 10 times 10 is 100, and the square root of 100 is 10. So we know that b has to have a factor of 10. And we know that it has to be, and we also know that when we add these three things together, we have to have a value that is divisible by 3. And we know that B has to be bigger than 40. All right, so here we go. Um, so we know that this B value has to be a factor of 10 times another square number. Okay, so all right, so let's start plugging square numbers in and let's see if it works. That's not too bad. Uh, Spencer, what is a small number that you think would make sense to put this in, oh, in for? A hundred. A hundred is, so we don't want B to be a hundred, right? That's, that's not small. That's the opposite of small. Uh, so uh, what's the smallest possible value of B? Oh, sorry, what's the, yeah, what is the smallest possible value of B? 40. No, sorry. Well, it has to be bigger than 40. 40. 40. 50. So 50. So 50, right? But, okay, so, so that would mean, that would mean, uh, so, so hold on a second. So hold on a second. So um, I'm thinking about this for a second. So, so that means this number, so we need a number times 10. That's also, it has to be a square. Well, that's also a square number. And so I'm thinking about this. And so here's how I'm going to think about this. I'm going to think about this as a b. So I'm, I'm going to have to square this. So, so let's call this n squared. And I'm going to call this value here uh, n 10 times n, right? Does that make sense? OK, all right, all right. So, so what's my smallest possible n value? <laughs> Nine. Nine. 
Why? So so nine so the square root so nine times uh, one hundred is what? Nine hundred. Nine hundred. Okay, so that would that would be great. I wish I had my work with me. I don't even know where I put it. I've got my work. All right. <laughs> so go nine. So um, so here we go. So so we're saying great. So we have our forty. So we're saying our so so we're saying n is nine. Is that what we're saying? Well, okay. it could be nine. It could be nine. All right. Wait. All right. No. Hold on. All right, so uh, so looking at this, so we have nine times ten, which is ninety. Nine. Uh, and so, okay, so we have ninety. So ninety times this ten is going to be nine hundred, right? What's the square root of nine hundred? Thirty. Thirty. So we have plus thirty, plus uh, then we have nine squared, which is eighty-one. You want to multiply that 30 by 2 because there's... That's right. You have to multiply this 30 by 2 because we have this 2 here. So that's 60. So we have 40 plus 60 plus 81. And we get... So hold on a second. So if I add this together, I'll get uh, 1. It's 100. So 181. Now, is this divisible by 3? 100. No. It's with a remainder because 90 and 81 goes straight. Right, yeah, because you add those together. No. 82. That's obnoxious. Uh, so, no, it, it didn't work. It didn't work. All right. So, what else could we try? What else could we try? Uh, so, Okay, let's try 16. Well, because 16, 16 is a, a square number, right? Yeah, that's true. Okay, so that means, so that so we're going to say n in this case is 16. So that means if n is 16, then b would be equal to 16 times 10, right? Yeah. So that would be uh, 160. Okay, so we still have our 40 plus 2 times, so what's uh, 160 times this 10 right here? 1,600. 1,600. 1600. What's the square root of 1,600? 40. 40. Uh, and then I have uh, 16 squared, which is? Uh, 256. 256. Uh-oh. Um, Hold on a second. Uh, yes, sir? It's plus B, not plus N Plus B? Like oh, right, right, right. So, right, 160, right, because B is 160. Yeah, I'm sorry. I have N's and B's. Okay. So, all right, so that's 40 plus 80 plus 160. Now, when I add 4 plus, well, okay, let's add these together. And so, what do I get? 280. 280 is 280 divisible by 3. No, no. no, so that doesn't work either. All right. So then what's the next uh, value of, of n that I use? Let's try 25 because we're looking for the lowest possible. So for t so we're saying n is equal to 25, which means that b is equal to 250. All right. So we have 40 plus 2 times all right, so we have 25 times uh, 25 times uh, 10. 250. Oh, oh my goodness, am I, am I getting am I getting myself confused again? No. Yeah. Okay, so we already have it. So we have and 250. Sorry, 250 times this 10 right here. 2,500. What's the square root of 2,500? 50. 50. All right. And the cool thing is we notice that this is a linear progression, right? That's crazy. All right, so we have plus the b value. Jonathan, you getting this? So we got 40 plus 100 plus 250. So let's add these together. So I get uh, 0. That's a, so uh, 5 plus 4 is what? 9. 9. And 2 plus 3. 
So is this divisible by 3? Yes. yes. All right, so we know that the lowest value of B that will work is 250. All right. So it's a so it's a it's a lot guess and check, um, except we really narrowed our guesses. So we knew that b the b value had to be ten times a number, and this number had to be a perfect square. And so since we're looking at the smallest, then we start looking at the smallest smallest possible values, smallest possible value that we could plug in that was. Uh, greater than 40 would give us a B value of uh, so so that's how we really limited our possible choices all right so there we go so I